Hello everyone, Darko2012 here with Global Government News, and I am covering an article that was originally from CNN, and it's titled, The Government Has Your Baby's DNA. Yeah, you didn't know that? <laughs> uh, it's posted from February on February 4th, 2010, and um, this uh, may come to, maybe uh, may come as a big shock to a lot of people, but um, the government has been taking your DNA since at least 2007 under uh, a law that Bush, uh, our previous Fuhrer, signed into law, which made it, quote, uh, legal to extract your DNA and put it into a database, um, of course, so they can help you, right? Um, because these eugenicists who believe in depopulation or population control measures, um, you know, they're just all about saving your life, right, prolonging your life and keeping you nice and healthy. And uh, so I'm going to just roll into this because I want to show you another article that uh, talks about that. It says, when Annie Brown's daughter, Isabel, uh, was a month old, her pediatrician asked Brown and her husband to sit down because he had some bad news to tell him. Isabel carried a gene that had uh, put her at risk for cystic, cystic fibrosis. While grateful to have the information, Isabel received further testing, and she doesn't have the disease. Uh, the Mankato, Minnesota couple wondered how the doctor knew about Isabel's genes in the first place. After all, they never consented to genetic testing. Aha, see? Uh, my fellow sheep, <laughs> I hate to say it, but it's simple. The pediatrician answered, newborn babies in the United States are routinely screened for a panel of genetic diseases. Since the testing is mandated by the government, it's often done without the parent's consent, according to the Brad Therrell director of the National Newborn Screening and Genetics Resource Center. In many states, such as Florida, where Isabel was born, uh, baby's DNA is stored indefinitely, according to the research resource center. Many parents don't realize their baby's DNA is being stored in a government lab, but sometimes when they find out, as the Browns did, they take action. Parents in Texas and Minnesota have filed lawsuits, and these parents' concerns are sparking a new debate about whether it's appropriate for a a baby's genetic blueprint to be in the government's possession. Uh, we, were all we were all appalled when we found out, uh, says Brown, who's a registered nurse. Why do they need to store my baby's DNA indefinitely? Something on there could uh, affect her ability to get a job later on or get health insurance. And, uh, of course, Mr. Brown, you're a very smart individual because uh, that's exactly what they're going to do. Because when they have your DNA... Um, they can, uh, uh, down the road, when this scientific dictatorship grid is completely in place and we are under the, uh, the grasp of the state and their government-run health care, right, and, or uh, government insurance health care option, um, where they will deny you care based off your DNA. And so um, that was a very good point that he made here. And uh, he said, according to the state of Minnesota's website, samples are kept so that tests can be repeated if necessary and in case the DNA is ever, need, uh, ever needed to help parents identify a missing or deceased child. Of course, they always play that. And you don't want your, you're, not a, you're not for missing children, are you? <laughs> the samples uh, get an RFID chip. You're not for uh, losing or uh, missing children, are you? The samples are also um, used for medical research. Um, yeah, so they're using your DNA for uh, research, and uh, you can say without without your consent, but uh, since it's written into law, you are bound by by a U.S. citizen as a U.S. citizen. Art Kaplan, a bioethicist at the University of Pennsylvania, said he understands why states don't first ask permission to screen babies for genetic diseases. It's paternalistic, but the state has an overriding interest in protecting these babies. He said. However, he added that storage of DNA for long periods of time is a different matter. I don't see any reason to do that kind of storage, uh, Kaplan says. If it's anonymous, then I don't care. I don't have an issue with that. But if you keep names attached to those samples, that makes me nervous. DNA given to outside researchers. Genetic testing for newborns started in the 1960s. Uh, with testing for diseases and conditions, if undetected, could kill a child for cause, uh, or cause severe problems such as mental retardation. 
Since then, the screening has helped save countless newborns. Over um, and don't yeah, how many uh, newborns have been helped by all those vaccinations and whatnot? You know that really helped them too. So, I believe that is about as much as I believe in global warming. Uh, over the years, many other tests were added to the list. Now states mandate that newborns be tested for anywhere between 28 to 54 different conditions, and the DNA samples are stored in state labs from anywhere from three months to indefinitely, depending on the state. Uh, to find out how long uh, or how long your baby's DNA is stored, see this state-by-state -state list. And uh, I'll post that link up there, guys. Brad Therrell, who runs the Federally Funded Genetic Resource Consortium, says parents don't need to worry about privacy of their babies. They're property of the state. You don't, you don't really own your baby. Come on, people. What are you thinking? They are property of the state. The minute they come from the womb, they are no longer your property. And that's why they get hauled off to re-education camps so they can be taught that the state is God, right? So, sorry about that little rant. The states uh, have in place very rigid controls on those specimens. Daryl says, if my ch children's DNA were in uh, one of these state labs, I wouldn't be worried a bit. These specimens don't always stay in the state labs. They're often given out to outside researchers, sometimes with the baby's name attached, huh? According to a study done by the state of Minnesota, more than 20 scientific papers have been published in the United States since 2000 using newborn blood samples. The research, uh, researchers do not have parental consent to obtain samples as long as the baby's name is not attached, according to uh, Amy Gavrigol, uh, one of the authors of Minnesota's report. However, she says it's her understanding that if a researcher wants a sample with a baby's name attached, consent first must be obtained from the parents. Wow, that's so nice of them to give them a little bit of a uh, illusion that they're in control, right? Scientists have heralded this enormous collection of DNA samples as a gold mine for doing research. And it says their uh, sample population would be virtually impossible to get otherwise. Um, it says Brown, Brown says that even with these assurances, she still worries whether someone could gain access to her baby's DNA sample with uh, Isabel's name attached. Uh, I know the government says my baby's data will be kept private, but I'm not so sure. I feel like uh, my trust has been taken. It says uh, parents don't give consent to screening. It says, uh, and uh, I'm probably going to make a two-part video on this, so uh, just don't forget to check out this second video because I'm going to attach another article to it which shows or um, uh, kind of reinforces the argument or of my belief, which is they've been taking um, baby's DNA uh, without consent uh, since, you know, at least the 80s. So I'm pretty sure my DNA is in a database somewhere. And of course, it goes a lot further than helping you because it is my theory that that DNA will be patented and that it is actually not owned by you. So these researchers, these scientific elite scum own our DNA so that when we want to have a cure of something where they can actually give us some kind of cure based off our DNA, we have to pay for it because, well, we don't really own our own DNA anymore. So this is the scientific dictatorship in which I speak of. Brown says she first lost trust when she learned that Isabel had received genetic testing in the first place without consent from her and her husband. I don't have a problem with the testing, but I just wish they'd ask us first. It said since uh, health insurance paid for Isabel's genetic screening, her positive test for a cystic fibrosis gene is now on the record with her insurance company. And the Browns are concerned this could hurt her in the future. It's really uh, a black mark against her, and there's nothing we can do to get it off or off there, Brown says. And let's say in the future they can test for a gene for, say, schizophrenia or manic depression, and your baby tests positive. That would be on there, too. Brown says if the hospital had first asked for permission to test Isabel, now 10 months old, she might have chosen to pay for it out of her pocket so the results would, you know, not be known by the insurance company. But uh, Kaplan says taking DNA samples without asking permission and then storing them, quote, veers from the norm. In the military, for instance, they take and store DNA samples, but they tell you they're doing it. And you can choose not to join if you don't like. Uh, <laughs> I was in the Marine Corps. I hope that didn't happen to me. But, you know, then again, now that I know about this whole thing, I, yeah, I got shot up with anthrax and it, it was, wasn't even necessary. And they knew that. So, um, yeah, I probably, you know, if I didn't have my if I didn't have my uh, blood taken at birth, it's probably was taken from me while I was, uh, did my service in the Marine Corps. So here we go on to the next part two.